Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with GiftsAnalog.com. Today I have something I bought and we're gonna open it up and look inside, okay? Because I'm really interested about this technology. It's a plug, plugs in your wall. And then it has another plug that you can still use the receptacle. But right there's the magic. It has an ethernet port. So what that does, there's two of these guys in here, okay? And then it came with the an ethernet cable, only one though, or is there two? It looks like only one ethernet cable in there. Seems like there should be two. So the way this works is you plug it in close to your router, you plug one of these into the AC socket, and then from your router, you plug that device into, uh, into this, okay? And so then it connects your router to this, and what it does is it sends that ethernet over your power. So you can be in another room and put the second one and uh, plug your computer or whatever into that one. So that's why I'm kind of curious why it only came with one cable. Uh, but anyway, so I want to test this out. You guys may have heard of PoE, Power Over Ethernet. That's kind of a newish uh, technology in comparison to this. This one's been around for a long time, but what happened is I was looking at these and I was kind of like, ah, there's one room in our house where we have an office set up for when a family comes, stays over, they can use that office to work at home. And the ether, our, our Wi-Fi just doesn't get there very well because it's behind this big kitchen wall that has a bunch of tile. I think that's why. And I tried to put one of those Wi-Fi extenders and it helps. It makes it usable, but it's not fast. It's, you know, so... It's not great, so uh, people will often move to another room to if they really need some faster Wi-Fi. So I was like trying to fix it, trying to improve it. And then I saw these and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try this. Now, I think, you know, these have been around for a long time, right? This kind of technology, but it never really gained a lot of traction. I think it, I just assumed it was because it wasn't very good. But I was looking at this and I'm like, wait, that says gigabyte. I'm like, gigabits. You know, I'm like, wow, that's fast. Is that really that fast? So I looked into it, you know, as an engineer, right? Curious about that kind of stuff. I kind of scoffed at it before, but then when I, it kind of caught my attention and I thought, okay, maybe, maybe that is worth trying. Because I was looking for a better extender is what I was doing. I was kind of searching around and I keep on running into these things. And I finally stopped to pay attention and um, when, I, when I saw Gigabyte, I'm like, is that true? And so looking into it, I see there's a standard that came out and it's called Gigabyte um, Home Network. And it's only been around, I think, six years. And so it seems like there's been a number of companies making chips. And some of these things are what you call system on a chip, SOC. So I want to see what's inside one of these. So let's open it up. I'm going to stop talking. Let's just open it up and see what's inside these things. Maybe it's a gimmick. I don't know. And then I'll test it later in another video. But today's video, we're going to just look inside. I'm just really curious. So let's just do it. All right, guys. So here's the unit. Okay. And there is the model and all of that kind of stuff. Try to get the light on it. So TP-Link. So you plug it in the wall here, and then you have this optional plug here that you can use. And it's up to 15 amps, it says. TP-Link, you have three LEDs. Okay, I've taken the screws out. Let's take it open. So, okay, there's the plastic. You can see it's pretty solid plastic here. And there's the three LEDs right there. Okay, I'm going to show you a close-up of all this stuff. But what's interesting is they've got these two different boards, okay? There's the RJ45 connector, and here's the power. Okay, so let's just push this out of here. Okay, so you can see the vents, both sides. Here, let's try to get both these cards out. Got to slide them out straight, and there's vents. Yeah, vents on both sides, okay? So let's put that plastic over there. So we'll just take a... A big picture and then I'll zoom in okay so on these two cards 
you can see aluminum caps, transformers. This looks like a power supply card, okay? And then on this other card, there's not much, especially on this there. There's that black thing over there, and there's the RJ45. And there's that black thing again. Can't see a part number on it. We'll look up close, okay? And here's a little magnetic. So check it out. We got these wires coming from this board, the power board. It comes to here and then goes through a filter, it looks like, or something, and then drops down to this board here where all the data is. So that's the magic chip. We're gonna take a close look up at this. But all those pins right there, to me, that looks like, uh, so there's Ethernet. That looks like an Ethernet transformer. I'm pretty sure that's what that's going to be. But yeah, power supply chip. So we'll, we'll take a close up, okay? But this thing here, you can see the ground just comes straight up through. It's screwed down here, but it comes straight up through, and it connects to the ground of the, of the optional plug, okay? And then each one of these lugs here, whether it's line or neutral, has this little flat, you know, call it brass, but it comes up here to the board up here. And then we have a rod inductor. And the same thing on this side. Come, comes up here from this pin here, comes up here to this pad. So, and then through rod inductor. And after the rod inductor, we get our power back to these pins, okay, for our optional plug. So it looks like we're filtering um, whatever's here, because we have data on this one. See, data is going to come off these wires. So it looks like the optional plug, since you're local, you don't need the data here, because, you know, so it looks like that local thing is filtered from, you know, the data is filtered off, so you get nice clean power. So that's pretty cool. So here's the wires. That, I thought that was a ferrite bead, but it feels like rubber. So I think that's just heat shrink holding things together. And it's kind of bonded down there. I see a Y cap right here and magnetic. That looks like a flyback transformer and some other filter capacitors and so on. So let's take a close look, look up at this, okay? All right, guys, so now we're looking at a close-up. Here's the power side, okay? We already looked at that, but just close-up. Oh, you know what? Let's look at the value of that capacitor now that we can see it. Maybe. Oh, there we go. So it's X2 cap, agency stuff, 0.1 microfarad cap, okay? So that's right across the lines. That's why it's an X2. It's right there, okay? And we have our inductors. Okay, now let's check out these. The wires coming from... The power, they go up here, okay, and look at that. There's a fuse. First thing it hits is a T2, 2.5 amp fuse, 250 volt, okay? That brown fuse, I kind of recognize those things. I'm wondering if that's a Wickman or if somebody copied the color because it seemed like Wickman did brown fuses. And then there's another yellow cap, probably the same cap that's on the power board. And look, oh, look at that. There's a bridge rectifier. Wait, yep, bridge rectifier, D2, plus minus outputs. They go to that bulk capacitor. And then this transform is right there. So I think it's getting switched on and off. Uh, it's probably a flyback. There's a Y cap right here, going probably between the grounds at the primary side and secondary side for combo noise. Then on the other side of the transformer, where we can see bulk capacitor, should see some diodes and yeah. Okay. And no inductors because it's a flyback. That's what a sign of a flyback. You don't have to have inductors. Ford, you would. Here's some more diodes on the back side. So some more outputs probably. There's some board information. And this looks like a post regulator probably. Okay. D down inside the there, there's small magnetic. That could be, uh, I don't know gate drive transformer or current sense. Probably gate drive maybe. Oh, and there's the opto for the feedback. So you can see the part number on that. Let me focus on that. Okay, there's a, we're focused on that. Is that EL8 or 6? 817, 8141. You can tell the optos because they're long uh, for the voltageization, two pins on either side. 
some more diodes. So, yeah, there's probably several outputs coming off of that flyback. Couple inductors here on this side. And there's some resistors and heat shrink. You can tell because it says R1 here. So maybe current sense, since it's R1, it's kind of a, and there's another X cap, 333, or yeah, I don't know what value that is, but it's bigger than this one. So yeah, I don't know what that is. Well, it might not be an X cap. It doesn't look like agency stuff. It's probably just a, well, it could be. It's hard to tell. So yeah. And then the bottom side, there's not a lot going on. Those diodes we saw, probably the output of, and then there's this localized, um, no, point and load converter probably. It's the other side. Yeah, pretty cool. Cool stuff going on. And look how they connected the boards, just these connectors, these pins, these long pins, kind of a nice, inexpensive, but very, you know, good way to do it. They serve as standoffs at the same time, uh, connector pins, you know, so pretty neat. Nothing on this corner, just on the other three corners. You can see they're actually, yeah, one of them's connected to this trace and then over here, so then up here on this corner. So three sides, it looks like. Yeah, pretty cool thing. It's pretty amazing that all the magic's up here. Let's take a look at the magic. Okay, there we go. Let's try to get that focused. Okay, we have a little post regulator right here, looks like 2.2 microhenry. And I wonder if that's the same chip that we saw in the other one. Kind of hard to see that 16 AF might be the same regulator. Look, uh, crystal oscillator, Broadcom. What part is that? BCM60350 KRF uh, BG. So, wow, pretty cool. Now, it, okay, now, you know what, guys? Let's go back to here. The wire's coming up to this board, to this ballon, okay? And then you can see right here that there's some isolation there. And so they come off this side, go through some capacitors, so capacitive coupled, and then 5.6 ohm resistors. These things here are probably, it says diodes, so they're probably protection diodes. You can see the part number on them. And then they come out and you can see the isometric uh, traces. They go to this chip. Okay, that's pretty interesting. They come out of the chip, passive coupled again, and go into the Broadcom. Then out of the Broadcom, there's all these traces. Some of them go up here to the LEDs. Other ones go to this chip right here. What is that? A wind bond. 250. 16 JVS IQ or I0, can't tell for sure. 2104, maybe a production date. And see these pins right here? Here's the RJ45 out, right? Or in, whatever. But this has to be a, a one of those Ethernet transformers, okay? So you decouple, you know, the primer, you know, one side to the other side for noise and ground decoupling. So that works great. And see the little black guy there? That's what that has to be. Let's flip it over and look at the other side. Yeah, I still can't see any part numbers, but that's where that black thing has to be. I wonder if we can see the top of it. Let's try and look at the top of it, but can't really see. So, yeah. Okay, now, you know what else? That, there, that transformer where it comes in, that Fallon, I think is what it is. On this side of the board, I was noticing there's not a lot of parts, just some R's and C's. But look at this. There's another chain right here. So data's coming off this way, and it looks like R's and L's. See the green things? Those are green things or inductors, I think. See it right here? R, L, and there's a C. So it's L, C, L, C kind of thing. So first you come off with R's, it looks like, then LCLC filters, and then what's that blue one? Probably another inductor, and then uh, see it says C's, yellow things are ceramics, probably black ones. Yes, you can see the, it looks like a bunch of pastures and inductors, so 
and then the traces kind of curve this way and there's two blue things right there which are capacitive couple coupling again see it says c's they're all c's and then you flip it right over and that lands right here so that looks like it's going right into Broadcom chip again. So, yeah, there's two uh, data chains, it looks like, this way and on the other side. So, pretty interesting. All right, guys, it is pretty interesting, right? Um, now, just to remind you, those two bo wires go to those two boards. Uh, one of those is power supply, right? So, it's line neutral, and so you get line power, you know, through that fuse in that power supply board, but then it also goes up to the data board through that uh, uh, ballon, I think it is. And so, and then it strips off the data and wow, it's pretty impressive, right? Not very many chips. Um, yeah, it's, I, I looked and tried to find that chip, the data sheet. I didn't have any luck. So if you guys can find it, let me know, okay? Uh, but I'm going to keep looking. All right. Hey, uh, thanks for watching. Two big thumbs up to my patrons and uh, my members of my YouTube channel and uh, Danny for being a team member. Thanks so much. And for you guys to hit that uh, super thanks button. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Buy me a cup of coffee, beer, that kind of thing. Really appreciate it. Oh, and you become a member just by hitting the little button down there or become a patron by as little as a dollar a month. That's much appreciated. But... All right, guys, thanks. I'm going to uh, try to use this for a while, and then I'll come back and report how well it works. But, yeah, uh, they've been around for a while, so I think it's proven technology. We'll see how fast the speed actually is. Uh, I'll try, yeah, I'll, I'll test it out, come back and let you know, okay? Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.